Welcome to another episode of The Writer's Review. Before we get started, I'd first like to thank everyone for your patience over my two-month-long break from uploading videos. I hope that the wait wasn't too hard. Also, I'd like to thank the four people who have subscribed in that time and welcome you to the channel. I hope that this video and the videos I upload in the future will merit you pressing that subscribe button. Now, on to the review. Today, I'll be taking a look at Legionnaire, a novel co-written by Nick Cole and Jason Anspach. So, first some basics. Legionnaire is the first installment in the Galaxy's Edge series, which currently contains a total of nine volumes, or at least that holds true for the first season. Apart from these main books, the authors have also written many more works in this fictional universe, the most notable of which are Galaxy's Edge, The Savage Wars, which is a prequel series, Tyrus Rex, Contracts and Terminations, which is a side character spin-off series, and there's also the first installment in the second season of this main sequence of books. In terms of genre, Galaxy's Edge is a hard military sci-fi series, and in terms of other books that I have reviewed on this channel, it's most similar to the Frontline series, written by Marco Close. The similarities between these two series don't end there, however, since Legionnaire also features primarily one point-of-view character, whose narration is presented in the present tense and from the first person's perspective. Although with Legionnaire you also get a couple of short story-like chapters which feature side characters and are presented from the third person's perspective in the past tense. In terms of the story itself, there really isn't much I can say if I want to keep this review spoiler-free, especially since the entirety of the plot happens over the course of two days. So sorry if this section of the video is a bit on the short side. Anyways, as I've mentioned before, the novel follows the perspective of a single point of view character, in this case, Sergeant Chung. As the title suggests, he's a legionnaire, a soldier in an elite branch of the Galactic Empire's army. As the novel begins, we follow him and Victory Company as they embark on a diplomatic envoy mission on one of the Empire's more fringe worlds, and since this is a military sci-fi novel, I think you can guess how that ends up turning out. Lots of shooting, lots of explosions. What I can talk about, however, is the subgenre structure of this novel, which is perhaps one of the simplest ones I've covered so far. The main ones are action, obviously, and world building, somewhat surprisingly. So the action is by far the most prevalent subgenre element featured in this novel, with perhaps I'd wager 50 to 70% of the entirety of the book being dedicated to battles or other kinds of combat encounters, with the rest of the novel just being there to tie everything together. In terms of world building, the authors really made an effort to get across the general atmosphere of the planet this novel is set on, and they achieved this through various descriptions of vistas, unique alien creatures, and the morale and interactions within the Legion. Now that I've gotten into the second book in this series, I can also see that this novel features quite a lot of long-term world building as well, setting up events and characters for future novels, kind of giving it a sort of prequelish feeling to the entire series. Apart from these two main subgenres, you can also expect to find some drama, mainly in the form of bickering between the legionnaires, but really this is a sort of literary glue which kind of ties together all the combat sequences. You can also expect to see some suspense in the novel, which is kind of obvious given the combat-oriented nature of the novel, although there is also a suspense-oriented chapter near the end of the novel, but that's kind of going into spoiler territory. Now regarding other quirks about this novel you should be aware of, since it is a military sci-fi series, obviously there's gonna be quite a bit of military jargon and abbreviations involved, so you might want to brush up on those before jumping in, and since there's a lot of combat sequences, the book can be quite action-packed and intense to read, 
especially given the first-person present tense point of view narration. In terms of gripes I have with this novel is the author's use of onomatopoeia, which is the description of sounds like bang and zap, which I personally find a bit distasteful, but it wasn't like a huge bother while reading this novel. So in conclusion, did I enjoy this novel? Yes, yes I did. As I've mentioned in previous reviews, I'm a huge military sci-fi buff, so this novel was a blast to read. Sure, it might be centered mostly around shootouts and explosions, and a bit lacking on character depth and development, but right now, with exam season going on in university, and the stress accompanying that, this novel was exactly what I needed to blow off some steam. So if you're in the same position as I am, I would definitely suggest you pick up this novel. But if my word isn't enough, here are the ratings from the sites I usually feature on my reviews. If you are interested in picking up this novel, it's available in ebook, paperback, hardcover and audiobook formats, and it comes in at around 90,000 words or 9 hours in length for the audiobook version. In terms of pricing, the Kindle version is the cheapest as usual, coming in at about $3 or thereabouts, followed by the paperback and hardcover editions. In terms of the audiobook format, there's a bit of a departure from the books that I've covered thus far, because you can only pick up the audiobook version of Legionnaire combined with the second book in the Galaxy Z series. Now, in my mind, this isn't a bad thing, especially since the combo usually comes up in Audible's 2 for one sales. Now, if any of this information changes by the time you're watching this, I'll have Amazon links in the description down below. That wraps up the spoiler-free section of this review, and I'll be going into the lesson section of this video. If you don't want to get spoiled, I suggest you click off the video now, and if you enjoyed the review, consider liking it or sharing it with some of your book-loving friends. So, let's get on to the lesson section of the video. What struck me most about Legionnaire was the author's approach to world-building. Now, this isn't to say there is nothing else to be learned from the novel, but for the sake of this video, that's what I decided to focus on. If you've read the novel, you're probably already realizing that I'm going to be talking about the two short story-like segments featured in the novel, mainly Camp Forge, which is set in the center of the book, and the epilogue at the very end. If you've read these segments, you're probably thinking that yeah, they were a nice change of pace compared to the rest of the novel, but otherwise not quite so special. But I think that they do quite a lot towards the novel's story and its world. Let's take the Camp Ford sequence as our example. If you remember, it follows the perspective of a newscaster robot as it scours the ruins of Camp Forge, making in memoriam pieces about fallen soldiers and generally reminiscing about the battle which took down Camp Forge. Sure, this sequence does shine a light on some of the events that happened at Camp Forge, but all of these get covered anyways later on when Victory Company makes a reappearance to figure out what had happened. So, from a strictly plot-oriented point of view, that would make this short story a bit redundant. But since it wasn't cut in editing, it must serve another purpose, which in my mind is world-building. Namely, it really starts to hammer home the dystopian nature of this novel setting, in contrast to the somewhat more positive image that the readers might have about the Empire at the very start of the novel. For instance, it shows that newscasts are recorded by robots in this fictional universe, and that these newscasts feature built-in pauses so that the news companies who will end up buying these holovids can easily add their own branding. Also, the news robot isn't really interested in finding out the truth or reporting it, but more in earning money. He even says it himself when doing in memoriam pieces that should a certain soldier be important enough in their home system that their in memoriam piece would sell well. Alongside this, this section also hints at the fact that artificial intelligences as a whole might not be very well received within the Empire, and in general, this whole segment shines quite a negative light on the Empire's moral compass. This notion is further expanded upon 
in the epilogue, which really delves deep into the corrupted core of the Empire. I mean, they literally sent a whole legionnaire army to rescue a warlord's hostage just so they could execute her afterwards. And to top it all off, they covered up the whole thing just because they encountered an alien menace which basically wiped out the whole of the force, except a handful of soldiers. Okay, now that we've covered the content of these segments, let's take a look at their technical aspect. The most obvious of which is the use of minor characters to be the bearers of narration, instead of using the main protagonist. So why would this be useful? Well first, it gives the author the ability to show two different locations to the reader in the same time interval. I think this is pretty self-explanatory, since if you wanted to do this all with the main protagonist, you would have to give them a strange ability to teleport from the convoy to the camp forge, and then back again, and then somehow incorporate that strange ability into the plot, without making the whole thing a giant Swiss cheese full of plot holes. But perhaps more important than this is the world knowledge you can introduce alongside these throwaway characters. For instance here, we get the knowledge of the fate of Camp Forge and a look into the inner workings of the Empire's media system through the news anchor bot, and with the old veteran we get to see how the Legion used to look like and what kind of shady missions they were involved with. Now sure, you could rewrite this novel in a way where Sergeant Chun stumbles into all of this information through other means, such as data pads or supporting characters, but in this case, you'd probably end up with the stereotypical all-knowing protagonist, all the stereotype where the main character constantly gets bombarded by irrelevant exposition about the inner workings of the world they live in. Well, that wraps up this writer's review. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it entertaining and somewhat informative. If you enjoy this kind of content, consider subscribing to the channel, or maybe just click on one of the links on screen now and go watch one of my other videos. So, I hope to see you on the next writer's review.